Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the All Right Podcast. Remember, it's not the best podcast, but it's not the worst podcast. It's just an All Right Podcast. Guys, I'm back on another episode now. And just before before I um, give the intro to my guest, um, I just want to say, guys, we got a new uh, intro as well. Um, a friend of mine, Nicola Malloy, she made the intro for me. So please go follow her for Instagram down below. Um, and also my Instagram as well it will be there as well. Um, so I haven't done this in a while. I think it's been a week since I've done this because I have guests lined up. So I, I, I took a break. Uh, because I've been doing this for a bloody three months, uh, so I took a break for a week. Um, but we have a guest here, and it's a good guest to get, lads. I'm not lying. Uh, for the vote for some back, and um, so it is Josh. So Josh, how's it going, man? What's up? How are you keeping? I'm grand. How are you? All good, all good. Uh, me and Josh, before this, we were um, literally talking here, and I was talking about his, his setup and his background. And we're going to get more into why he actually has to have this background and setup. But um, we were saying as well as that um, he actually has his camera, my camera would be different. Mine's a shitty webcam, and his is the proper fucking camera itself uh, that's connected in. But Josh, please, for the people that are watching right now and don't know who you are, please introduce yourself. Yeah, so my name's Josh Loveridge. Um, I'm Managing Director of Loveridge Designs Limited, which is a full-service media agency which focuses on a data-driven approach to content creation. Now, we're obviously a globalized company now at this stage for anyone that doesn't know, so we've been working with brands such as Red Bull, Meal, Disney, um, on such projects like Star Wars and stuff like that. So we're, we're, we're starting to really breach into the market and we've been kind of doing great. <laughs> So I, I didn't even know that. So I, I want to get to know you, man, because um, the force of a person that actually showed me yourself was James Bourne. Um, do you know, yes. you know James? We're a mutual friend of his. Yeah, I um, and I, I met James from when I wanted to do my short film. So he, I, I met him through that. Um, but I, I want to I go back to when you were younger, man. Um, and when you start having an interest in all this, and you probably got asked this question so many times if you were doing interviews or so, but I, I don't know. And for the people that are watching now, they don't know either if anybody's new to the likes of yourself. So we're literally, me and the fans are learning together um, as, we, as, we watch, yeah. as they're watching this right now. So um, please um, let me know, when did you start getting interested in the likes of all of this? So I had my kind of path where i am now is a very interesting one it's it's kind of you know there's the there's kind of two paths in life as i kind of say there's the path that is kind of less taken and then there's the usual path that people take and i took the path that was less taken and what i mean by that is so growing up i was the average child in that i spent eight nine hours a day playing games that's Mm. all i did i was just interested in playing games i didn't know what i wanted to do all that you know the usual then kind of fast forward to like, I was around 15, I actually dropped out of mm-hmm. secondary school mm-hmm. um, and I finished, uh, so essentially I finished my leaving cert at home and um, essentially done it myself, just kind of, which, is, which isn't really a thing people yeah. do. Yeah. Um, but I kind of, um, you know, I'd done that and got all that sorted and um, fast forward once I'd finished that kind of saga. I then hopped into, so I went, so I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I was kind of like, okay, I want to do something, but like, you know, I don't really know what I'm interested in. So then I said, right, okay, well, I've been playing games my whole life. So I'm just going to, you know, I'll just, I'll do game design. Why not? That seems easy. You know, that seems like I was back then. I was what I would call it like lazy, Mm. just pure lazy. Didn't had no ambition, no, no drive, nothing. Mm -hmm. So I then went to, obviously, I started to dive into the world of game design. And that's when I began to kind of, that's when I kind of, I like to say, a kind of a boy turned into a man, so yeah. to speak. Yeah. Um, I started, essentially, what happened was I realized that there, everyone told me that there'd be no kind of path to success, that this industry was unbreachable that essentially I was wasting my time doing the games course. And I'd done that in Biffy. Now, the, obviously, the educational system within Ireland for games is amazing. It's great. You know, it provides an opportunity, but it doesn't teach you what you need to know for the industry. Mm. No one can teach you that. And that's why it's so hard to break into. Mm. So essentially, going along all the times, kind of, you know, learning, practicing, kind of molding myself, upskilling, all that type of stuff. I essentially started to, you know, started to get better. I started to kind of, you know, slowly but surely increase my skill level and I started to release games. And then from there, obviously, while I was doing my games course in Biffy, I kind of 
I, I got a break, as I call it. Um, mm. I got contacted by essentially Microsoft and I signed a deal with them to publish a game I made on Xbox, mm. which in turn then kind of was my kind of reach out point. What was that game? Now, what was the game? Um, that, that game was called The One We Found. Um, mm. Now, that was a survival horror game. Mm. It's on Xbox and some PlayStation. Um, actually, you can still buy it now. You can still go on and you can... Yeah, you can yeah, yeah. Right, I'm yeah. an Xbox and Mac actually, shelf and PC, so I do play games a lot, so I, I will be checking it out after this, but go on. Yeah, so um, that kind of, that was my breach out point with regards to the game side of things. So I slowly started to get better and better, and eventually I kind of essentially taught myself the stuff you needed to know to be a, a professional game developer. Now, at that point, I wasn't, I didn't know how to run a business. I knew how to make games but I didn't know how to run a business. So mm. then I was back to, okay, square one. And then I realized very quickly that being a game developer is an extremely, extremely hard industry to make money in. Yeah. Because it's like, it's like kind of like, it's, it, it's a marathon, right? So at the beginning of being a game developer, you make no money at all, mm. really. Like you've no money to kind of work off your cash flows poor. You don't have, you know, when, like angel investors or anything like that putting money behind you so yeah. how do you make these games well then i realized okay i need to be doing something that coincides with the gaming but mm. also is you know makes me makes money that i can live off mm. so then i was like okay right and then slowly i started to get into kind of uh, visual effects and um, you know so I, that side of things, high-end motion graphics. So I kind of then I kind of took a tilt shift and I started to learn that as well. Mm. Um, now from there, that's when kind of Loverage Designs as a whole started to get formed. So that was kind of, Loverage Design was formed around being a digital agency. So helping companies with like, you know, their graphical brand and, mm. you know, high-end post-production. And that's how that started. So they kind of midway, um, while I was in college, they kind of started to split. So where the game inside of things where I was making games and publishing them on like, you know, the big platforms. And then I was also growing this agency. Mm. And, you know, essentially it, it was really kind of, it was weird managing the two and learning to manage them. But essentially from there, while this all was going on, I obviously finished my um, course and all in Beefy and Bray. And then from there, I was like, okay, where do I go next? Because I'm always a big proponent on education. I believe you have to keep learning every day to improve self-improvements, you know, how you get better and what it makes us what we are. So I was like, okay, I want to finish my education. I want to I want to do something, but I don't want to spend four or five years in, you yeah. know, college yeah. wasting my time. When, like, all the tutors were saying to me, like, all the lecturers, um, and they, uh, if they ever listen to this, they'll know who they are. Yeah. Um, but they all told me, you know, listen, you're wasting your time here. You need to be, you know, out, you need to be out in the business world, you know, mm. learning. That's mm. the only way you're going to learn. So I was like, okay. So essentially then what happened was I essentially skipped the degree and went straight on to a master's. And mm. um, now I essentially started doing that in service oriented architectures. Mm. So if you don't know what that is, that's essentially high end system programming. Right. Um, so like, it's a certain, yeah, it's a, it's a specified field of essentially software creation. And um, so I was kind of doing that as well. I got halfway through that, got a few post-grad certs in, and then I said, right, this, you know, I'm wasting my time here. Mm. You know, this is, you know, the companies were starting to really take over everything. By perfect example, I haven't taken a day off in seven years, and that includes Christmas Day. Like, Jesus. no, like it's been 18 hour work days for the last seven years. And no Josh, days off. No, no. Fucking take a day off, man. You need to no, learn. Uh, do right. I'll t <laughs> I'm telling you, and this is the thing, right? And this is why, like, a lot of people ask me this, especially in the Irish games industry, and hmm. uh, kind of bringing it back, tying it back into that. Everyone was saying to me, "You can't do it. No one's going to do it." You know, I remember this stuck in my head when I was going to checking out the different colleges and stuff. And one of the lecturers said to me, he was like, he was like, um. You'll never, if you ever want to make over a hundred thousand um, in a year, if you ever want to make over a hundred thousand in a year, mm. being a game developer, you're never going to get there. Now, obviously, a long time ago, we mm. we overpassed that, and it was a big kind of you know stick it up to him. Yeah. But 
you know, bed like, posters now with a st- paid people to stick outside his house and say, we fucking love Josh yeah. and look what he's doing. Like, yeah, I would have done that. Yeah. So, like, you know, it, it kind of proved um, every, a lot of people wrong. And that was my kind of whole path. I've been kind of what they, I like to think, a trailblazer, really, mm. to show people that it can be done. Mm. And that, like, you know, it, you can do whatever you want. Like, a, a big people thing, a lot of people say in colleges as well is, is they say, oh, you should always chase your dreams. Mm. And, you know, I think that's the worst thing to tell someone. I always tell people to chase their realities yeah. because, you know, it, people kind of put dream if you call something a dream it means that you don't think you're going to ever get there Hmm. but you know if you kind of conceptualize it visualize it and work towards it every day then you're going to get there eventually and that's been my kind of ethos the whole kind of time Hmm. i've been pushing ahead and you know getting all these stuff sorted like and it's it's been interesting like obviously i've skipped over a lot of stuff with how i got to where i am now and yeah. like, you know, obviously the troughs and hollows, but like, you know, that's a, <laughs> I could spend 10 hours talking about the mm. journey, but essentially that's really been it. It's been, in to sum it up in a couple of words, it's been hard work every single day since essentially I started and mm. never kind of looking back and always pushing to move forward. Mm. And obviously building a strong network of people around me, like, you know, mm. I can't thank everyone that's been working with me and you know giving me all the opportunities that have been given enough like no one's handed me anything yeah. but i've they've given me the opportunities to perform and to show people what can be done essentially and mm. um, so that's really been how i've got to where i am now now obviously now the company's split into two so loverage designs is the full service media agency so we're working with people you know all the big brands and then stratton studios is the game side of things and mm. um, that's our kind of publishing house really and um, with that and we're publishing games on playstation 4 xbox one nintendo switch and um, we have a playstation 5 <laughs> so, nice uh, nice yeah, yeah. lovely yeah. so uh do you know yeah, what so, do you know what actually is well i have to ask you a question that you, you say you, you don't you don't take days off and stuff like that and i'd say when you were growing up as well i can i can i can hear that you kept saying as well that this wasn't for me and that wasn't for there and a lot of people that go to do something and then it's like failure happens they kind of tend to brush away from it but would you would you say that um with them times that you said you probably just wasted would you would you count them as learning like learning points then would you have that it didn't push you back if you get me I'm I'm a I'm a weird one with failure. Um mm. so a lot of people like obviously, you know, there it, like it's not been a smooth path. There's been a lot of failures. Like if you go back and look at some of our first games, you know, some of the some of the stuff people said there was horrible. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. you get that. Like fa- fa- like you're always gonna come against failure, but mm. I kind of look of it as a learning point. Okay, mm. what can I learn from that and how can I improve so that doesn't happen again? And I do that. Like, obviously, now my retrospective of my earlier years, I wish I was doing what I'm doing now. Now, obviously, I'm only 21. So most Jesus people are like, oh, Christ. you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, most people are like, oh, you're so young, all this. Yeah. But I, you know, I think I could have been spending a lot of years doing a lot, uh, a lot more. And um, now, obviously, Is some people regret? would say, well, Is that regret I'm hearing. Is that kind of regret? Because what it's, you're doing right it, now, I don't think at your fucking age that you should be regretting shit like that. But maybe that's just the person you are. That's maybe you've always, I, you're probably, yeah. you're probably, you're a perfectionist as I can hear from it. It's perfectionist. Yeah. yeah I can hear. Yeah. It from one, I'm one. definitely a perfectionist. And yeah, that's yeah. obviously, uh, you know, and that's a big thing that we focus on um, in house is the 80 20 rule, as we call it. So 80% right and leave the extra 20% because that can, that can be a, that can be an inhibitor. Mm. Um, now, obviously, when you're pushing to do things, but obviously, you know, some people that say, well, them all them years I spent playing games just eight hours a day would have been learning how to be a game developer. And yeah. um, so, you know, it, 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 it depends. I'm always I'm always a harsh critic on everything. And um, so it's I'm a, I'm a difficult one. And obviously, that's what's made me very compatible with the high end brands. So the high-end brands are like bringing it back to the leverage design side of things. They're very strict, extremely strict. We're working on tight deadlines and the deliverables are very tight. So, you know, that obviously ties in with my personality very well. 
and allows me to, you know, lead people to be able to deliver these results and um, for our companies that we're working with. I'm I'm hearing a lot of success, right? I'm hearing a lot of success yeah. from Marie. I want to know about was there times where it wasn't successful and that it was a hard time going through all of that. I want to hear that because I, I like doing interviews. I like getting fucking deep into people and fucking know. Yeah. I shouldn't say deep into people on podcasts. I can get fucking in trouble <laughs> for that. Like but I want to know when it wasn't like, as you said, your first ever game, people are giving you nasty comments. How, what way did you react to certain things and um, for the likes of that? Let us know. Let us know about that. I loved it. Yeah. I love being the underdog, always have. Mm. And it's actually harder to be successful than to be not successful. Mm. And what I mean by that is there's expectations now with stuff you do. Like back when I was like, obviously back when I was at the start and everyone was saying, right, you cannot do any of this. This is impossible. You're wasting your time. Mm. This isn't going to happen. Obviously, I know this doesn't happen for most people, but yeah. the first thought that runs through my head is watch me. Yeah. You watch say you can't, oh, you can't yeah. be done. I'm going to show you how to do it. Mm. And obviously, I've done that. So I never was, because I know some people are the type to kind of say, listen, you know, they take things to heart and people are like, you know, why well, you can't do this. They're like, okay, the goal seems so far away that they can't mm. touch it, they can't reach it. So it's impossible. But I was always the one that was like, I was like a dog with a bone. And I was just like, no, I'm going to do this and I'm going to show you how. And obviously, um, back in the earlier days, it was much more, it was much more gratifying mm. because I was learning so much and improving so much. Like now, obviously, where we're at and everything, it's very incremental. Mm. Like, you know, a lot of stuff we're doing is refined. We're at the leading edge of everything. So, you know, it's, it's hard to, okay, where do you go from there? And mm. um, so it's in the earlier days, I found it much easier. Mm. But again, I'm a very headstrong. Like, you know, I, uh, I knew I was going to do it. I, it was just a matter of when. Mm. Um, and I never kind of, I did question, like, obviously, I'm not, a, I'm not a robot. Like, I obviously, there is times when you question your question what you're doing and yeah. kind of, okay, am I pushing down the right road? And, um, you know, am I wasting my time, all this? But then it always comes back to your why. Why are you doing this? And if you have a strong why, then that's all you need because that's going to get you through them harder times. And, you know, obviously from there, it's just about your foundation. And if that's all good, then you're sorted and you'll get through it and you'll just keep moving forward and pushing forward to better things. I can, well, I can tell from you saying all that, like when you start that um, speech, I'm going to call it, motivational speech i could pitch out you know when rocky and he put the music in the background you can do anything good like that i can i can just fucking picture it um but yeah. i want to i want to ask as well when you released your first game and um, what was the feeling like when you actually like can you remember back to when you released that like fuck all the comments and negative shit when you actually released that and published it and it went public what was the feeling that was going through you when you when you've actually released it it's exhilarating mm. i have to say Mm. it's truly it's truly it's a unique feeling that happens every year so like imagine a pit in your you know that pit in your stomach where you're about to do something and you're mm. just like <laughs> i can't control this this yeah. is this is you know i just have to observe i'm an observer now i can't control so it's giving that control away but it's amazing like you know obviously when you see like you know over a million people watching your content critiquing it good and bad at once and you're watching that like you know it's 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 exhilarating it really is that's the only word to describe it yeah. but like it's kind of like an outer body out of body experience mm. it's, a, it, it. it's like, like it's you know, not happening it's, it doesn't feel like it's actually happening that all this hard work and effort you put in that's finally out there it's like it's like yeah that's what i'd probably say it as is that if you throw it out there and then you're getting all these good responses and then all this positivity is coming back as well you just don't know how to handle it because you never know how to handle it before um and i, I understand when you're saying it but i want to ask as well and um, because these podcasts are because i can learn things as well i want guests on that i can learn about as i'm doing this podcast right now i can see on facebook that you you share a lot on facebook and you do a lot of uh, videos and stuff and i am going to actually you do your intro because i love your intro and the way you do your intro and um, so i want to ask as well for the likes of myself that wants to um expand um out more uh the likes of this podcast and get more guests because i had sir steve o on and i've been making yeah. youtube videos five years and i couldn't get anything anybody yeah. on 
Um, this podcast has given me the opportunity to do that. Um, I got a girl called Totally Rootless on as well. She'd be actually, she'd be well before this episode. She's episode 60 and, and the likes of that. And now I'm getting uh, keen to me on as well. And I can see yeah. with this podcast, I'm progressing more than I have in the last three months than I have five years doing yoke. Um, and I want to ask yourself, um, how do I go about um, branching out more? reaching out more to more people if if you can if you can answer that. so this comes back to as i like to call it user retention at scale mm. so well, i'll take your now obviously when i say this it's just completely <laughs> hypothetical um but so right your podcast right now mm. it's at say i'd like to call it a grade d and mm. what i mean by d is is that if I subscribe to your YouTube channel, right, mm. and I subscribe, I'm not getting a unique user experience, as mm. I like to call it. So the way you need to grow this would be true. You need to provide people a personalized experience every single time. Now, what I mean by that is you can do that through multiple things like marketing automation and stuff like that, where, say, for example, a new video, you publish a new video, the person gets a personalized email that with their details in it that essentially makes them feel special like yeah. you're reaching out to them each time you need to make people feel captivated and motivated to want to share your content mm. now obviously from there you would build up and slowly build quality like of your setup more so like you know higher quality cameras mm -hmm. and better you know better background uh, better display. collateral yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that Mm -hmm. um, that's how you do it and then from there what you do is you need to give um, give back as I call it. so mm -hmm. I work and a lot of the and it comes back to how we market our games as well it's the give give get model and that's a model I've modeled and essentially what it means is that you have to give us twice as much as you want to get yeah so say for example you could be given lead magnets out so say for example you get a guest on mm -hmm. me perfect yeah. example you could say to me right Josh, would you have any content that you could maybe write in a quick email that I could put out to our subscribers? So you're given actionable content that people can action upon mm. from what they're watching. Now, mm. the more you give, the more people are wanting to give back and the more they're going to share your content. Mm. And obviously, it's about reminding them to share your content. Also, like perfect example, mm. if someone subscribes to your channel you they should be put into like you know a 10-day kind of email sequence that's giving them value each day and then asking them maybe for a share or yeah. asking them for an action or something like that hmm. that's usually the way you do it but it's all about giving the more you give the more you're going to get hmm. now there is no secret to math success really quickly hmm. it's all about a well-reasoned models that are going to help you scale better over time and um, but from just your unique situation right now, obviously the more higher the higher profile guests you can get on, the better. That's yeah. going to be an easy way to reach their audience and catch their audience. Mm. But if that's all, it's not pointless. But it's all um, not utilized as well as it could be if you don't have these back end systems behind it that are going to help you push that forward. Yeah. So the main thing for you right now, I would say, is just get like a unique or user experience. So everyone's personalized. And then from there you can, you know, um, hmm. work, work off there. Yeah. And that will, that will, that will get, that will get you a good bit of the way there. Hmm. And as well, ask people, that's, that's one of the big things. A lot of people forget to do is to say, you know, what do you want to see? Hmm. Like send an email or do a survey. That's what I like to do with any things. I'll put out a poll or something and I'll say, okay, what elements of like uh, what elements of the last episode did you like? What didn't you like? What are you finding annoying? What do you what are you liking? Get, you have to get inside the heads of your users to be yeah. able to scale and grow quicker. And once you do that, it'll all just take off by itself. Jesus Christ, That's well done. Right, yeah. lovely. Uh, thanks for that. I will keep that and I'll, I'll take that on board as well. Um, usually, I don't know why, man, but as I was saying before we even start recording, I look like an old photograph right now. 
like it looks so gray and you know, but in the other <laughs> podcast it doesn't so i'm like what's happening right now so yeah i will have to update me um equipment and i think you're right about expanding out and making people feel special as well and um, knowing that um i'm giving you this content and stuff like that but i i want you to watch this and it's it's just a per- on a personal if i got an email from the likes of a uh, youtuber i watch and he said my name and stuff like that as well here just an update that we're we're selling this new merch or we're selling this and you get me on there They're like that i feel like a part of a community that's what i feel like i feel yeah. like i'm a part of the community i'm part of this person and we're all just one big and i i totally agree with you on that um it is hard to um grow this kind of thing but i fucking love doing it man I love doing it. I love talking to people. I love um, yeah. communication. I love learning about uh, new people and what they're interested in because people that are creative, people that are doing some. I'm just, I, I attract them so much because I love all that positivity and stuff like that as well. Um, but the likes yourself, Josh, you're a perfect fucking example of it. Um, I just, I just love uh, what you're doing and that you, you've proved people wrong and that what you're doing now, you can literally look back and as I said, you can get posters and people can hold them outside the teacher's yeah. room. Fuck yes, uh, for the likes of that. <laughs> um, but I do want to say as well that you, you said your first ever horror game, or your first game was a horror game. So, um, and you also said when you were younger, you used to just play games on stop. And I have a friend, and he literally all he does, Josh, every day is sit and play games, and he's 24. And I keep telling him, go off and do something. He loves voice acting. Like he loved, he'd love to do voice acting. Um, he loves it, the likes of that. And he's really fucking good at it. I think if it's one thing that he's good at, it's that. Um, but I keep saying to him, go out and do this, go on Facebook, get this. There's people that'll do it, get you to do it for free, do animation. And he's like, I don't know where to start. He's not motivated enough. And I'm trying to push him. Um, but for the likes of that, um, also when you're doing gaming and stuff like that as well, I heard that you have to be really good at maths as well when you're creating games and developing games now not at all no because of people that, that, have told that, me that, and i was like oh shit because i'd love to create no. animation i'd love to do my own game and i'd love to do the voiceovers for the game and even get fucking me mate involved and do that but people are saying maths and i was like shit man i'm fucking terrible maths so please fucking put that rumor to bed right now by saying that what oh you're my god this drives me nutty yeah. <laughs> It, it's it's everyone says that and i've seen a few guests that you've had on said it as well and I, you know i'm nearly jumping through the screen when i hear it. i'm <laughs> like no that's 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 not true yeah so there's different sides of game development right mm. if you're not good at maths don't do programming it's mm. <laughs> as simple as this is mm. you know either get a programmer to work with you mm. or just use pre-built solutions you don't need you don't need to be good at maths. And even then, programming isn't maths. Mm. Well, if you're in the physics side of things, you know, it obviously is maths. I obviously love maths. Um, it's one of the things I studied at a postgraduate level. So I obviously am very good at it and I love it. But you don't need it. No. Mm. It, it, like, there's multiple roles in game development. Like, if you're interested in the animation side of things and, you know, all that, we'll just go into that then. And mm. just give that a gander use pre-built solutions there's plenty of them out there and um, and so yeah anyone that says this is what i say anyone that says i don't i'm not good at maths i won't be good at game design they're mm. an, they're inhibiting their own success yeah and it, you know it, that's not something you can really take away from them because if you take away that okay you don't need to be good at maths they're going to find another problem with it yeah so they're just scared of the they're just scared of the kind of the hard work that needs to be put in a lot of the time. So anyone that thinks, okay, oh, I'm not going to go into game design and I'm not good at maths, don't worry about it. You'll be yeah. fine. Right. Um, <laughs> now, Josh, that's fair enough. That, that put it fucking to bed. Um, so on the likes of Zoom, um, I only do a half an hour and stuff like that as well, but uh, yeah. it, it came up there saying there's another uh, 10 minutes left. So I'm going to get into the last segment. Josh, I do want you back on. I want to talk much much more in a different fucking episode and um, so i i'd love for you to come back on but i don't care i say this in all my podcasts i don't care if you're a scientist i still ask you this fucking question and um, so guys you know what it is by now josh you probably know what it is by now if you're watching the oaks guys we're getting into yeah. ghost stories Ooh, scary. right so josh i have two questions for you one do you believe in the afterlife death anything like that ghosts and two do you have a ghost story or do you know anybody that kind of told you a story that freaked you out before that you could tell with nine minutes left yeah so 
I'm I'm a very scientific man myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm I kind of uh, I don't know. I don't particularly believe in it all, mm -hmm. but I'm kind of never someone to dis dismiss something because there is some obviously I've. There is some weird stuff that I've, especially through the games that I've made, especially the horror games mm. that I've researched in. And, you know, there's been some people that have been very scientific people that have been ex experiencing these things. So I never want to dismiss anything. Yeah. I don't recognize it. I don't involve myself and I just kind of stay away from mm. that side of smart, things. Smart, um, smart. Because, yeah. So I just, uh, yeah, with that. But saying that though, um, from research and especially from the one we found some of the stuff that like there is out there is pretty pretty freaky like yeah, yeah. like especially like uh, okay so I'll, I'll dive into it a tiny bit so mm -hmm. during the one we found obviously it's for anyone that doesn't know the one we found is like a essentially it's a first person survival horror game set in this mental institution where there's a russian um essentially sleeper kind of base underneath it and um, yeah. where they're conducting experiments on the patients. Uh, yeah, 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 um, yeah 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 so while i was researching into that side of things i've done a lot of research into lobotomies because that was a big kind of um thing and for anyone that doesn't know lobotomy is essentially where they used to take an ice pick stick it through someone's eye into the back of someone's eye and access the brain through like the oh. soft tissue behind the eye socket yeah. and they used to like hammer it in and kind of like uh, essentially get rid of them um, different different areas of the brain destroy them but there was <clears throat> this and i and we utilized it within the one we found so well, during these uh, lobotomies that they were doing they discovered that there was this frequency mm -hmm. right and um, and a lot of actually people think that this is the frequency that is attributed to ghost sightings and stuff like that. Uh, they call it the fear frequency. And um, so it's it's like, I think it's 20 hertz or something. It's below what the human ear can hear. But mm. essentially what it does is it essentially makes the inner ear vibrate. Mm. And what that does is it causes the brain to hallucinate slightly and see like oh. apparitions and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Um, so during the game, we were actually playing that frequency to people. So if they had really um, high, because you can only hear it with high quality headsets, mm. but they were actually um, kind of experiencing that. And some people said that they did kind of experience some strange things while playing. So it, it, that was a really interesting kind of thing to jump into. And obviously, um, can't say too much, but we are researching into a new kind of mm. horror game yeah, at the yeah. moment so um it's yeah we're doing a lot of research into that side of things um which is good and i love it i love researching into all of it and seeing kind of what other people's opinions are and all that side of things but me personally i just kind of stay away from it because yeah. i'm uh, <laughs> too busy to, to worry about to all fucking that. dig down that hole but i'd say you say for research yeah. and stuff that's that gives you the excuse to go down them deep fucking holes and uh, yeah. kind of experience that. And I think, I think, um, I think you're right. Um, a lot of people, um, do, do come on this and when I say to them, they either say, nah, I don't believe in it. I have no stories. I'm like, right, that's fine. Fair enough. Um, and then I try to pick another topic to talk about for the end of it. But, um, and then some people say they do when you have weird stories and I, it's, it's just crazy, man. I just, I just like to believe in all that stuff. It's just something about it that, um, it's just, I don't know, what I don't know. It's just fucking freaky. I fucking love it um, for the likes of that. Um, and I never want to experience anything like it, if it is, um, personally, because uh, I'd literally take a heart attack or something. I'd fucking, I'd pass out. Um, but yeah, for the likes of that. So we do have like four minutes left or something like that. Um, but I do have to, I'm going to cut this anyway. Um, so Josh, is there anything down below um, that I can put down below um, for people to go check you out? Um, I'll send you over our. I'll send you over both the uh, social handles for our the companies, and you can probably put them below. And people, people are interested in kind of more the film production side of things and the high end post production. Check out Loveridge Designs. And um, I post stuff. We post stuff on the regular. And um, you know, we at least once a week. Um, and then I'll send you Stratton Studios as well, which is the gaming side of things. So if you're interested in gaming or, you know, just want to 
check out what we're doing, check it out there. And um, we will be announcing our newest title, and um, mm-hmm. that's releasing on Halloween this oh. year. And um, we'll be announcing that over the next two weeks or so. So that's actually just getting finished at the moment. And mm-hmm. um, so we'll be, yeah, well, I'll send you them. And if you, and again, if anyone has any questions as well, maybe if you're a budding, either a budding filmmaker and you want to get involved in the more production end of things, or if you're interested in game development and you don't really know if that's your thing, just drop me a message. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, I'm extremely busy, but I will get back to you. Um, or one of the team will get back to you. Um, I always try to give back as much as I can. So yeah. if you have any questions, you know, if you're stuck or you need want someone to take a, a gander at your work and you know, kind of give you some advice on areas that you can improve, just just reach out, and I'm always more than happy to help in any way I can. Perfect. There you go. Right, well, Josh. Thanks very much, man, for coming on and uh, doing this. I really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we can have you on again um, a bit down the line. I'm trying to get 100 people and everybody has to be different. And then after I just fucking jump for the first 100. Uh, but guys, thanks so much for watching. Remember, um, I'll leave links in the description below to my stuff as well. And also Josh's. Please go check Josh's stuff out also. Um, as again, thanks very much, Josh, for coming on. Uh, guys, thanks very much for watching. Um, and remember, it's not the best podcast, but it's not the worst podcast. It's just an all right podcast. Guys, like, thanks for watching. And peace. Oh, 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 oh,